It has been a while, but we have a ton to get to today. We've got a video from the production team, a confirmed Avienda casting, news on a video game about the Wheel of Time, some leaked set photos to talk about, another sighting of the Waygate, and most importantly, everything from Jordan Con, including some footage that has not been released anywhere yet, and a ton of memories. Also, season two of The Wheel of Time is wrapped. Jordan Con was an amazing time, and I know many of you could not make it, so I'm gonna give you as close a look today as you can get without being there. All of this today on the weekly Wheel of Time news. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers through the fourth book of the series, The Shadow Rising. If you have not read that far, I'm gonna be talking about plot points from the fourth book, you've been warned. All right, so most of this episode is gonna be based around Jordan Con, and this first piece of news comes from the release about the show that we got while we were at Jordan Con. In the opening ceremonies at the convention, Rafe Judkins and the Wheel of Time production team released a video answering fan questions about season two, as well as announcing a surprise casting. So let me play the clip real fast. Because we can't be there, we've tried to gather some of the creative team, actors, crew to answer some of your burning questions, uh, give you some information about what we're doing with season two, answer some of the things that you are wondering about from season one. And we've actually gotten permission to give you an exclusive first piece of news, which is casting. Um, and it's the casting of probably my favorite character in the books, Avienda. Um, so I'd like to announce here at Jordan Con for the very first time that the role of Avienda will be played on Wheel of Time by the amazing actress Ayula Smart. Ayula's been fantastic. She is a part of the fight scene that's happening right around the corner right now. Um, so it's it feels very fitting to be announcing her in this place where we're seeing her months of hard work learning how to use spears, how to do flips, how to pull up a veil and convey a death glare with her eyes uh, all come into play. Uh, and she, th this woman is gonna make you very, very excited to see more of the world of the Aiel. So, Ayola, welcome to Wheel of Time. Everyone, start Googling her now. So Ayola Smart has been cast as Avienda for season two of the Wheel of Time. So obviously there are a couple things to discuss here. First, let's talk about what the casting of Avienda this early means for the show and for season two. Now, Rafe Judkins already told us that we would be getting more Aiel than we thought in this season, and it's been fairly vague what he meant by that. In the books, the first Aiel we meet are in the Great Hunt, as we learn they are searching for the Karakarn. We have very limited interactions with them, however. And then in the Dragon Reborn, we meet Maidens of the Spear and more Aiel, including Avienda, Gaul, and Ruark. Now, given what we know that season two of The Wheel of Time will be primarily a combination of books two and three, it makes sense in the narrative that we're gonna get more Aiel and Avienda does make her first appearance in the story in book three, but what level of involvement will she have in the story of season two? Will we get to book four level involvement? I would assume so, as she's barely in book three. And additionally, Rafe mentioned that Ayula, and by extension Avienda, were a part of the iconic fight scene that was being practiced right around the corner from where that interview was being filmed. So that could mean one of two things for season two. One is the battle scene that he's talking about could be the battle at Falm, something that Rafe confirmed would actually be happening in this video. The other thing that it could be would be a battle at the Stone of Tear. Obviously, if the battle that he's referring to that's taking place is the battle at Falm, which is what most people are assuming, uh, this is something in the books that the Aiel are not involved in. If that is what's happening, that isn't something I'm a huge fan of, having the Aiel be involved in this, as it seems quite improbable as the Aiel are on the other side of the continent, but I'll reserve my judgment for seeing how it all plays out in context. I do still think it's possible that Tyr is one of the sets that they're using Morocco for, as there are multiple locations in Morocco that they're filming that don't all seem to go together, so it's possible that they could be filming two different locations in the story in the same location uh, in real life. But we will have to see. This all does lead me to believe, though, that the Aiel will play a much larger role in the story much earlier than they did in the books. So let's talk about Ayula herself. Now, Ayula Smart is an Irish-Nigerian actress uh, with movie, television, and stage experience. There are a few good reels up of her performances, and I think she's a really good actress from what I have seen her in. Okay, so the Avienda announcement came from Rafe Judkins, as you already saw during a video that Amazon and the Wheel of Time production team put together for the event. That video is currently posted up on the Jordan Khan official YouTube channel. In that video, 
The cast and crew were asked questions that were sourced from the Wheel of Time fans prior to the convention, and then they answered them in some interesting ways. Now, I'm not going to go over each and every question in this video. Go watch the Jordan Con video for that. But I will hit on some of the questions that I thought were important. First of all, let's start with Daniel Henney. He was asked what his favorite shooting location was, and he answered Italy. Now, he tells a quick story about staying in Italy longer than the filming for a quick vacation, which I totally would have done too. And I realized, though, that I don't think many of us knew that they had filmed in Italy at all. So a couple takeaways on this one. First, it sounds like Lan and Maureen have a side quest that is a stop at a location that was set in Italy. Second, if this location wasn't widely known, it makes me wonder what other locations they may have snuck in for the filming. Who knows? The next question I'm going to cover was for Kate Fleetwood, the actress that played Leandrin in the show. She was asked what her favorite part of bringing Leandrin to life was, and she had a fairly long answer about some of Leandrin's nuances, but she ended her comments by saying that there will be some surprises from her this season, and we will get to explore her deeper and darker side. Obviously, for those of us that know the story, that means Leandrin's going to be exposed as the Black Aja this season, or at least I would think so, and hopefully we will get to see her do some very bad things. One question that Rafe answered was in regards to special effects. Rafe mentioned that in season one, they were forced in a number of shots to use more CGI than they had wanted to due to some restrictions from the pandemic and the circumstances around extras and all that kind of stuff. But in season two, they are moving back to using a more of a combination between the two of heavy practical effects touched up with CGI which I'm a fan of. They did that very well in episode one, I thought. I, for one, thought this was very noticeable in the difference between how the Shadow Spawn looked in episode one, like I said, and then in episode eight. In episode eight, they looked like PlayStation video game characters rather than real Trollocs. So I think it dropped the immersion uh, to a big degree and it made that battle look cheesy. So I'm very happy to hear that we're going to be going back to a combination of the two in season two. Another thing that Rafe mentioned that I thought was significant was that in season two, the characters will be more on their own and not together in groups the whole time. He thinks that we'll see them on their own quite a bit more, which is very interesting. I do think it will make for more compelling television to follow various storylines. I think that was a struggle there in the first season. The question will be the writing for those storylines and whether they're able to pull them off. That's always my thing is it doesn't matter what changes you make. The writing has to back it up. So jury's still out on that. So next up, we have news that all of the filming for season two has wrapped. This news comes courtesy of WattSeries.com and Geeky Eerie. Now, season two began filming back in July of 2021, just shy of a year ago. They have filmed in multiple countries on different continents, and while not remotely near the level of COVID craziness from last year, they still had to deal with some filming during the pandemic. The first two questions that always seem to come up when season two filming completion is brought up is first, what will the release date for season two be? And second, what about season three? Let me go ahead and address the release date first. I can officially say that the Wheel of Time season two release date will be i have no freaking clue and neither does anyone else my best guess at this point is just based on the need for post-production and timing of the other shows being released i think that we're going to see season two sometime in the spring of 2023 yes i know that is a while it's possibly an entire year from now almost my hope is that they take their time they get the post-production right and then they promote the hell out of the show in the meantime. We'll talk about that in another video. In regards to season three, what I can say is that it has not been confirmed to have been picked up yet. My only guess is that they will wait until season two airs, honestly, before announcing anything. The only way I would have seen season three being a for sure given to be picked up early would be if the show is a massive critical and commercial success. Season one was very successful, but it ended poorly and sentiment has been mixed. I could see Amazon waiting before committing that much money again. Another thing worth mentioning about the filming has been sightings of Waygates at two separate filming locations. Now, I'm not going to show the images here out of an abundance for ca of caution. I don't want my video to get pulled down, but both of the images are essentially copies of the Waygate from season one, but in vastly different locations. One of the Waygates that has been seen was photographed in a forested region that if I had to guess, I would say is probably Tyr just based on what we saw of Tyr before. The second of the gates was on the coast in the ocean, right off, like right at the edge of the ocean in Morocco on the beach, with a strong implication that this way gate would be the one at Falm. Now, both of these way gates seem to give credence to the idea that we're gonna see both Tyr and Falm in season two of the show. There is a lot that we still don't know about how they're gonna do that. Uh, and I'm sure we will learn a little bit more before the show comes out. But we may have to wait until season two to figure out how they're going to weave all these plot threads together, because I'm still not sure. The last piece of Wheel of Time news before we get to talking about Jordan Con is a pretty cool announcement, if you ask me. The Wheel of Time video game from the 90s has been re-released for purchase. Now, if you were not aware, 
There was a video game in the 90s that is not canon at all, but it follows an Aes Sedai who is the Keeper of the Chronicles as she tries to foil the plots of the Shadow. It's set about 150 years prior to the start of the story, and it is, as I mentioned, far from canonical. Uh, it is a first-person shooter as well, which is interesting. Either way, you can pick that game up and check it out by clicking on the link in the description of this video. It's only like nine bucks, so it's very, very cheap, and it's certainly worth a playthrough. But before moving on to talk about Jordan Khan, let me mention today's video sponsor, Audible.com. Audible is the world's largest provider of audiobooks, and audiobooks are one of the very best ways to experience the Wheel of Time, in my opinion. They are read masterfully by Kate Redding and Michael Kramer, and it's an entirely different experience than reading them. They use accents and voice inflections for all of the characters, and I can truly tell who they are speaking as just by hearing them talk. It's remarkable, and as I mentioned, it's a great way to reread the books. If you want to check out audiobooks, but you don't want to spend the money to find out if you're going to like them, just head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nameless and sign up for the free trial. You're going to get a free book that you can keep regardless of whether you keep Audible or not. Grab the Eye of the World and check it out. You will not regret it. Again, audibletrial.com forward slash nameless. But let's go ahead and get back to the news. All right, so let's talk about Jordan Con, which was now almost a month ago. How time flies. Now, before I show some video and pictures from the event, I want to give you my general feelings about Jordan Con this year. First of all, Shout out to Jennifer and the entire crew that put the event together. It was the largest event they've ever had there, and it felt like very, very well put together, very well done. And you could see how much effort and time went into making the event great. James did an amazing job putting together the Wheel of Time track with panels, events. I thought it was a blast. But I will also say in my second Jordan Con, it was a far different experience from my first. Some of that was due to 2021 Jordan Con being somewhat limited due to COVID restrictions. And some of it was just simply due to the fact that so many more people were there this year. In 2021, we spent most of our time hanging out on the couches in the lobby. There was limited capacity in most of the events, so the lobby was pretty much packed at all times. In 2022, despite there being almost double the number of people, there was so much more going on. The lobby was still packed with people, but essentially anywhere you went, there were people that just wanted to engage and talk about the series or catch up. So for many of us, the growth of this community over the past few years leading up to the show coming out was marked by COVID lockdowns and talking on Discord for hours each night. I can think of a number of people that were members of my Discord server all the way back in 2019 when we started it. And these events are a chance to get to meet the people that you've been talking to for years but have never met in person. Being able to grab food with people that you've only talked to through an app is a great experience. Now, I'll admit it's a bit overwhelming with the number of people that have come up and say hi and that have seen my content. But I'm incredibly grateful that I was able to meet and hang out with so many of you. I'm just a nerd who likes this series and I'm nerdy enough to make videos about it, uh, it was great to be able to talk with other nerds. The last thing I'll say before showing some stuff from the event was that it makes me look forward even more to WatCon, which is coming up in July 8th through the 10th of this year in Columbus, Ohio, where we get to do all of this all over again. So without further delay, let me show you some of my mostly incomplete vlog from the event. I had intended to document like the whole thing, but hanging out with people got in the way. So there's a bunch of random videos from the event, from my trip there including some things I'll leave in there out of context just because they're funny. Make sure to look for Taylor, the editor reborn, wink, wink. So here you go. All right, getting ready to take off to head to Jordan Con. I am excited. I decided to drive rather than fly. Why did I do that? Well, it's about the same distance or the same time. I wanted to have my car when I was there and that way I also get to listen to Wheel of Time on the way down. That's awesome. All right, let's go.
finally arrived at the hotel. Uh, Atlanta traffic is terrible. Got all of my stuff set up here, up in the room. Now it's time to go down and hang out with some people in the lobby. Oh, Look who's here. Hi. Hi. Is that yeah. the one I can tell you everyone? No, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I will release this. I will release this. I will release this. I will release this. Oh, hello. Hi. We're on video, actually. So say something to these people. Something to these people. All these people. Them people. Those people, hi. Right. Something. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. There's so much hugging. Hugging. Yes. I got one on my head. Oh, no. In the car. The dark <laughs> Sort of like recording the podcast, right? Yeah. So we're about to do the panel. Yes. Any last like thoughts on before we do the Let's just basically call it the Fuck Mary Kill panel because I don't sure. remember the real name. So I know, I can't remember it. What are your um, thoughts? So we've added a competitive aspect and my thoughts are I'm going to win. I mean, I think that's wrong. I think we'll see. Did you show them what's on your uh, placard? This is kind of, I'm obsessed with this. Um, mine obviously just says my cap up, but I thought that was very creative. And on brand. Mm. Figuring out tech stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No waving, I don't get anything. There better be alcohol in those cups. Okay, good. Offering up quiet a little bit, thank you. <laughs> What was your favorite moment from Jordan Con? My favorite moment from Jordan Con was meeting you. Okay, that that's the right answer, but that's not very entertaining. Okay. Oh, my favorite moment at Jordan Con was being on the dusty wheel. I love that. Yeah, that was unexpected, and I was really flattered and excited. Love that. Hmm. What was your favorite moment from Jordan Con? It's meeting the people, seeing the people that I met from last time. Um, I mean, everything about it's fun, panels and all that, but hanging out with all these people that you interact with online and in the chats, that's the best part about this. Just sitting around these couches and chairs and talking nerd stuff. Love it. All right, Dana, what was your favorite moment from Jordan Con? Um... Wait a minute, just stop for a second. My favorite no. moment. Uh, it's very hard to say one moment. Simply, okay, my first hug. 
My first hug when I spotted um, Wolf Brother and I, no, no, my first hug when someone, I walked by and I heard a voice and I turned around, it was Malkier Talks. Big bear hug. Second hug was a flying tackle from Wolf Brother. So I know I should be looking at you. But That's awesome. All the hugs, all the time. I didn't know how I would feel about the hugs if I would get overwhelmed, but it was amazing. Hello. I'm just talking about you. What was Hello. your favorite moment from Jordan Con? From Jordan Con? Um, this moment right now, being asked about my favorite. Right um, answer. <laughs> uh, probably actually your panel last night. That was great. Which panel was that? That was one. Bond, Balefire, no. Igloo, Bond. Igloo, Bond, Balefire. It was Fuck, Mary Kill. Okay, well, you know, I'm trying to be appropriate. Yes, it was a good time. Favorite moment? Favorite moment has to be Watchinary. Uh, I Wrong feel answer. like I'm <laughs> that was probably the closest to like um, uh, Dumais Wells level chaos I'll ever see in real wow. life. Like, like I feel like the Leaf Brothers probably were um, at uh, Pit of Doom saying, "Have I not done well, Master?" Right at the end of that. So, so yeah, that was a good time. Thank you. Every time I go now, I go. I don't. I don't check it. Then, I'm, I'm interrupting here, <laughs> but I, I'm fully aware of it, and I don't and care. The planes full okay. And they made me check it anyway. They forced me to check it. Oh, Talk well. around Riyadh. Yes. Yeah. Welcome. What was your favorite oh, moment from Jordan <laughs> Con? This is a video. I hope you get on. Well, my favorite moment might be you just videoing Joe and not realizing it. Well, I'm set like this. Yeah. <laughs> but, um. Other than that, I always say the cheesy thing, and it's true about like talking to people and getting to know people I didn't get to know. Like, we were just hanging with Critter, and like I didn't meet her before this weekend. Uh, outside of that, which is the real answer, I really did like the, the panel where Rafe uh, did reveal stuff from the show. Awesome. That was really cool because I felt like there was the big reveal that we all got, but there was also like smaller reveals mm -hmm. that will give us stuff to talk about for weeks. Tons of stuff to talk about. Right. See, I like that was my favorite moment oh, until it. the Michael Livingston panel with the Origins, and he was talking about all the stuff that he's going to reveal. And it's can't wait. Those were both other favorite answers of mine, but my real favorite is Watchinary Live with wow. the puppet heads. I, I, I mean, heard. I could never have imagined they would do that. It was, it was hilarious <laughs> and fun. Brendan. Yes. You're not a member, you're an honorary member of Talk Around yes. Riyadh. <laughs> what was your favorite moment from Jordan Khan? Uh, it, uh, Tom, Tom's right, it is corny, but uh, it's very nice to meet all these uh, nice people who uh, were very welcoming of the fact that I have not disdain, but disinterest in this thing that uh, they all love so much. How, how and many times did you have to raise your hand? I think it was. I think it was four panels where they were like, "Has anyone not read the books?" And I was the only. Jump. I was the only one like, "Yeah, it's me." Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Nice well, to meet everybody. You. Good time. Thank you. All right, okay. all of you. This isn't a picture. You're on yeah, camera. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. All right. We'll start with you, MK. Yeah. Yes. Favorite moment from Jordan Khan? Um, meeting everybody. And Cop out everybody. answer, but okay. And, and it, it was, I'm not lying. <laughs> Favorite moment? Uh, accidentally being up until 4 in the morning every night. Doing accidentally? It again. <laughs> um, I would say my favorite moment is this moment right now where I'm on a live stream and I'm famous now. So famous. <laughs> Wait, this is a live stream? So famous. Not live. No, okay. I, not All right. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait. It's everybody, it's everything. Yeah, there's no favorites. There's no favorites at Jordan Todd. There's only great times. Yeah. Um, Wonderful Watchinary. Yeah. Wait a minute. Watchinary. Oh, Watchinary. Yeah. 100%. I yeah, changed my answer. Love it. <laughs> Hello. Mr. Melchior Thomas. Mr. Nablus, how are you? Wonderful. What was your favorite moment from Jordan Cohen? My favorite moment from Jordan Cohen was, oh, aside from meeting everyone, because I feel like everyone is saying that, and that is freaking awesome. If I had to pick a non-meeting everybody moment, it would have to be Watchinary. Mm. Watchinary was like off the chain. It was, it was magic going around that room that night. It was... Yeah, I was I was in the back and buzzing, and apparently I don't know the name of Marine Source out deep, but please don't hate me for forgetting that because the whole room was like, oh, so and yeah, I just had a brain freeze and was like, it's Marine Source, but I don't know the name, so that was my favorite moment. Thank you, okay.
favorite moment from Jordan Brown? Um, I don't know. It's all been incredible. Um, Igloo Bale Bonfire is possibly one of my favourite moments. Um, costume changes, phenomenal, beyond par. The Isis Mascendon probably needs to look at, you know, the uh, who was involved in that. I love the answer. Thank you. Great uh, favorite Jordan Con moment. I'm just making a little collage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Getting drunk, pre gaming, fuck Mary Kill. We're playing our own fuck Mary Kill. Yes. I love that. Yes. Love that. Same for me. Same for me. It's a good time. Yes. Fuck Mary Kill. Love it. Jody. Love it. <laughs> yes. Love I it. wanted to hear their justification I'm for why the fuck why the Mary Kill. Here. So complaint also. Hello. About that. Favorite? <laughs> Favorite moment is getting drunk with that guy and missing all the panels. Ah. <laughs> I didn't notice Guilty. you had anything to drink the whole weekend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you know? Yeah, this is it. I hijacked you yesterday. Should that be my top moment? Yes. Hijacking <laughs> you yesterday. <laughs> Favorite moment? Yes. The, the Michael Livingston uh, panel was, was amazing. I, 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 I'm happy to go with that. Thank you. So I feel like I keep him. Shit, I didn't even record you. I, w I had it the other way around. Okay. Hey, Critter, favorite Wheel of Time moment? Or, um, shit, I did it again. <laughs> Critter, favorite Jordan Con moment? Well, definitely more generally meeting everybody for the first time that I met on the internet long ago, but also more specifically the dance last night when we all got to hang out at the party because it was, it was awesome. Love it. Love it. Why? Omar from whatseries.com. I don't like Hiding pictures. from the camera. I'm not taking like a, It's not a picture. Oh, it's not a picture at all. It's a video. Then. It's a video. <laughs> what was your favorite Jordan Con moment? Um, seeing everyone. Love that answer. So true. Send me this video, please. Are you going to open it now? <laughs> Wow. So make sure all of you can come to JordanCon next year or come to WattCon this year and be a part of the fun. I'll be back to making regular Wheel of Time videos now that I am healthy again. I've got a couple written that should come out here soon, including a new top 10 video and a season one retrospective. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when all that stuff that I just mentioned comes out. Also leave a comment on the video to let me know what you think of the news or your memories of JordanCon if you were there. Huge thank you to my patrons for your support. You can see my top tier patrons up on the screen right now. They support the channel with their own real life money, which is amazing to me. You guys all rock, you make this possible. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find that link in the description of the video. And lastly, check out one of these videos here that you may like. I've got tons of Wheel of Time content out there. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.